This is the story of one man's desire on making a positive impact on the world as a doctor, which leads him to Hollywood with humble beginnings, in radio escalating to a massive career as a writer in television, leading all the way to creating some of the most iconic television shows. Today we explore that man's humble beginnings from healer to comedy writer. Welcome to the first mini-sode for Tales from the Telly. I am Mike, creator of the series, and a nerd filled with tons of useless information about the world of television. This series is intended to be a carryover to cover smaller subjects from the world of television, which will coincide with our larger episodes. In today's tale, we want to cover the early life of Sherwood Schwartz, and his foray into radio entertainment, and his transition into a massive career in television. Born in 1916 in Passaic, New Jersey, to Herman and Rose Schwartz, Sherwood graduated from New York University with a bachelor's degree, with the intention to become a doctor. During his education, he recalls an experience in an English literature class. During this class, he received a review paper from his instructor with no grade and the words, get out of pre-med and become a writer, which he kept throughout his life. Ignoring this advice, Sherwood moved forward with his pre-med education. Following his bachelor's degree, Sherwood decided to move to Southern California to get his master's degree, with the intention to get into med school. During this time, he lived with his brother Al Schwartz, who was working with the legendary comedian Bob Hope on the Pepsodent Radio Show, otherwise known as the Bob Hope Radio Show. Al Schwartz, who was the older brother to Sherwood even from a young age, was determined to become a writer. His parents, however, had different plans and decided that Al was going to law school, which he did until he passed the bar exam. After passing the bar, he immediately changed careers and became a writer. To help subsidize the cost of living, Sherwood offered to sell jokes to Bob through his brother Al at $5 a joke. After submitting his material through Al, Bob Hope loved his material so much that he invited Sherwood onto the show. At this point in his life, and after graduating with a master's degree in biology, a difficult decision had to be made at this time in American history. You see, Sherwood reports that people of Jewish descent were not able to get into med school, but exceptions are sometimes made for those that actually have two degrees. And with this, a tight window of opportunity was laid before Sherwood. Either take the job to write for Bob Hope and make a living, or try to get into med school again. After telling Bob Hope about his conundrum, an ultimatum was made. Bob made a contract for seven years and left it unsigned, giving an opportunity for Sherwood to pursue his dream career as a doctor. After touring several well-established med schools, it became clear that Sherwood would not be getting in. With the clear path before him, Sherwood signed the contract and began his career in 1939 as a comedy writer. Four years into the seven-year-long contract, Sherwood was then drafted into the Army and was given an assignment as a writer for the Special Forces Radio Service. This was during World War II. The G.I. Journal. It's the G.I. Journal. This program had drafted members from advertising agencies and also several comedy writers from all different backgrounds. Lucille Ball, come on! Yeah. Okay, Kay, don't be ridiculous. Well, you just met me. Hey, listen, a chow hound doesn't have to wait for dinner to be hungry, you know. <laughs> Hello, young man. I sort of remember you from someplace. You're, uh... Um... I'm a lieutenant, a current, a a private sad sack. After his service ended, instead of returning to the Bob Hope radio show, Sherwood moved on to a different program, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, during its first year with his brother Al Schwartz. After this series, Sherwood then went on to make a series which starred Hattie McDaniel by the name of Beulah. This was a radio program which would later become a TV series. A quick side note, in the early days of television, a large number of radio programs and actors would make the transition into television involving reboots. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But that is a subject for another time. This radio program would actually go on to be well received by the NAACP as she was the first female African-American actress who was paid quite generously for her role. 
She was actually paid over $1,000 a week in 1947 for the 15-minute daily show, which adjusted for inflation would amount to over $10,000 a week today. In our next episode, we will cover Sherwood's transition into television. Not only will we explain the shows that he has created, but also we will explore a very tenuous relationship that he had with a well-known comedy show host. But before we let you go, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about an awesome discovery during our research. Audible is now offering old-time radio programs of wide varieties for those who want to explore this medium. From the Bob Hope Show to the Green Hornet, you can find a wide range of classic radio plays if you want to explore the past. One of the best finds, though, is Orson Welles' famous chilling performance on The War of the Worlds, a radio program so terrifying that it caused the public to go into complete panic. Please click in the description below to try out Audible free for 30 days. Audible is a great resource for history buffs like us, with a myriad of fiction and nonfiction books. Check it out today. This is Mike signing off. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, tell us down below in the comment section, what do you think of radio plays? Is this something you have listened to in the past? How do you think podcasts today try to mimic and improve upon this long-used medium? Thank you, and good night.